Could changing what's on your plate transform your mental health? In psychiatry, nutrition is often an overlooked piece of the puzzle. While we know that medication and therapy are cornerstones of treatment, growing evidence shows that diet could also play a critical role in supporting mental health. But let's be clear, this isn't about promoting diet as a cure-all. It's about understanding how small dietary changes can complement evidence-based treatments like therapy and medication. In this video, we'll explore the gut-brain connection and how your diet impacts neurotransmitters, the role of inflammatory and anti-inflammatory diets in depression, the emerging evidence for therapeutic diets like ketogenic diet, and the link between specific nutrients and mood regulation. By the end of this video, you'll have actionable steps to make nutrition a core part of your mental health strategy, whether it's prevention or treatment. Welcome to Psychiatry Simplified. I'm Dr. Sunil Reggae, consultant psychiatrist. If you're interested in all things psychiatry, neuroscience, and mental health related, then this is the channel for you. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay in touch with all our future videos. Let's start off with the gut-brain connection, a concept that's transforming psychiatry. Your gut is home to 100 trillion microbes. These microbes influence your metabolism, immune responses, and mood. And that's why it's known as the second brain. Here's where it gets fascinating. Your gut bacteria can produce neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. In fact, disruptions in gut microbiota have been linked to anxiety and depression. Research has shown that diets high in processed foods can lead to what's known as dysbiosis, an imbalance in gut bacteria. For example, even a small amount of the bacterium Campylobacter jejuni caused anxiety-like behavior in rats. The good news, probiotic-rich foods like kimchi, sauerkraut, and fermented milk can help restore balance. Studies show that these foods may lower inflammation in the gut and support mental health. Now, I've written on the gut-brain axis a simplified review on Psychscene Hub here, and I've also explored the role of gut-brain axis in depression here. So you can visit psychscenehub.com to explore this further. Next, let's dive into the role of inflammation. We know that depression is increasingly being recognized as an inflammatory condition characterized by low grade inflammation and oxidative stress. Now amongst a range of other etiological factors, diet is a major driver of inflammation. High sugar, high fat diets trigger inflammatory pathways, while plant-based antioxidant rich foods reduce them. Evidence suggests that polyphenols found in berries, cocoa, and almonds boost BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, a key molecule for neuroplasticity. We know that individuals with severe mental illness seem to have elevated levels of oxidative stress markers in their brain. The Mediterranean diet that is considered a gold standard for anti-inflammatory eating has been shown to reduce depression risk by 30 to 40% in large population studies. And it's not just about the Mediterranean diet. Traditional diets from Japan, Norway, or China share these protective qualities. And we'll look at what are the common factors as we move through the video. Next, let's talk specifics, nutrients for the brain. Neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine don't just appear out of nowhere. They're built from nutrients. For example, tryptophan, the precursor to serotonin, depends on vitamin B6, folate, and zinc. These are cofactors. Similarly, tyrosine, critical for dopamine production, requires magnesium and vitamin C. When these nutrients are deficient, neurotransmitter levels can drop, potentially predisposing an individual to mood disorders. Zinc supplementation, for example, has shown significant benefits in treatment-resistant depression. Similarly, augmentation of antidepressants with L-methylfolate has also shown benefits in the treatment of depression. Let's now turn to a specialized dietary intervention that's been in the news for a bit, the ketogenic diet. Here, let's look at the basics. The ketogenic diet is a high fat, low carbohydrate approach that induces a state of nutritional ketosis where the body burns fat for energy instead of carbohydrates. This metabolic state improves insulin sensitivity. This is known as the G to K switch, which is glucose to ketone switch. This switch is known to improve insulin sensitivity, lower blood glucose, and enhance brain energy metabolism. 
So what are the postulated benefits of the ketogenic diet? Firstly, neuroprotection. Ketones like BHB or beta-hydroxybutyrate have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties which address oxidative stress and neuroinflammation, two key etiological mechanisms in psychiatric illnesses. Two, neurotransmitter regulation. The ketogenic diet increases GABA levels and reduces glutamate excitotoxicity. So what are the current applications of the ketogenic diet in psychiatry? Preliminary evidence supports ketogenic diets potentially managing severe mental illnesses, including schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and treatment-resistant depression. However, whilst the ketogenic diet shows promise, it's not without risks. Short-term side effects include nausea, hyperlipidemia, and leg cramps. Long-term risks, osteopenia, hypercholesterolemia, these require monitoring, though evidence suggests that LDL cholesterol increases do not seem to be associated with carotid plaque formation. There are also some contraindications. For example, the ketogenic diet is unsuitable in conditions like inborn metabolic errors, acute pancreatitis, or uncontrolled type 1 diabetes. Patients must always be informed about these risks and the limited evidence on long-term safety. So what does all of this mean in practice? Let's look at the evidence when it comes to nutrition, diet, and mental health. We have two key studies. One, the PREDIMED study, showed that Mediterranean diet reduced depression risk by up to 40%. Two, the SMILES trial, S-M-I-L-E-S -E trial, demonstrated that dietary intervention could significantly improve depressive symptoms with an effect size of 1.1 and cost savings of over $800 per patient. So what can you do to improve your diet for better mental health? And what are the key principles? Now we know that the RANZAP 2020 Mood Disorder Guidelines also had some key points with regards to nutrition and mental health, and I'll cover this now. The key principles as proposed by RANZAP Guidelines highlighted that a healthy diet should be flexible, appetizing, and sustainable. Prioritize ample amounts of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. Choose fresh foods over processed ones. Make fresh fruit your go-to dessert. Include moderate amounts of dairy, poultry, and fish, while limiting red meat and saturated fats. Use olive oil as your primary source of dietary fat. What additional aspects would we add to this based on the evidence that we have? One, prioritize gut health. Add fermented foods like yogurt, kimchi, and sauerkraut to your meals. These probiotics promote a healthy gut microbiome, which we know is linked to mood regulation. Two, focus on anti-inflammatory foods. Whole grains, fresh fruits, vegetables, omega-3 rich foods like salmon or walnuts. These seem to reduce systemic inflammation and of course support brain health. Third, avoid pro-inflammatory triggers. Cut back on processed foods, sugary drinks, and trans fats, as these seem to exacerbate inflammation and oxidative stress. And fourth, supplement wisely. Nutrients such as zinc, folate, omega-3 fatty acids, these have shown benefits in research with regards to psychiatric conditions. So to summarize, the takeaway is clear. Nutrition is a powerful tool, but it's one piece of the puzzle. By combining dietary changes with other aspects such as social connections, exercise, etc. And in the context of illness, therapy, medication, and other interventions, we can address mental health from multiple angles. And most importantly, individualized diet to the particular individual needs. If this video is helpful, give it a like and share it with someone who might benefit. Also, please subscribe to Psychiatry Simplified for more actionable insights in the future. A big thank you to all of you for supporting this channel. I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Until then, stay curious. Bye-bye.